together out there. You were out there putt putting, right? And fun yeah, you well, see it, yeah. <laughs> those are the days. Oh, throwback. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've got hot weather headed into the weekend. A pair of tropical disturbances. I'm going to spend you know, 80 to 90 percent of this weather hit mm -hmm. talking about both of those. But right now in the mid to low 90s, air quality is moderate. We do have sunny to partly cloudy skies overhead. And that heat index is up there, 110 courtesy a dew point near 80. That is super duper high middle of summer, if not higher than that, than the middle of summer here. We typically see, you know, mid 70s there when it's up near 80. It's just oppressive feeling outside. So tropics started here. There's two systems out there. We're going to talk about this one in a few minutes. Invest 95 L out in the Atlantic got a high probability of development. The first one that we're going to have to interact with in the coastal bend is going to be Invest 94 L. We've been talking about how this feature would hug the Central American coastline. It's doing exactly that and that proximity to land is really impeding a lot of the development. It's a very unorganized system and it will likely stay uh, fairly unorganized over the next several days as it crosses the Yucatan, then the southwestern Gulf, kind of in the footsteps of Alberto and last weekend's little tropical development. So a low chance to develop between now and Sunday. It will be a slow mover. It's going to cross the Yucatan Friday, get into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico Saturday afternoon, and then move into Mexico, maybe close to Tampico again on Sunday, throwing a little bit of moisture our way, widely scattered showers on Sunday. Then this kind of falls apart, takes the rain into Mexico on Monday. As that all happens, we'll see an increase in wave activity here. Saturday, Sunday, the wave heights grow up to five to seven feet on Sunday at a nine second period that is going to elevate the rip current risk on Gulf facing beaches. It will also elevate the tides. So minor coastal flooding in play, especially in the morning. That's when high tide will be over the weekend, and that could push water up to the dunes in spots. So Sunday looks like the most active day with respect to surf in the area. Then we're going to watch how this system develops. We've got tons of time to watch this before we start talking about it all. Just being aware of it. That's where we need to be in terms of your prep for this thing. Just knowing it's out there. A lot of congruency in the data through early next week. This is next Tuesday. I do think we have a developed system in the Eastern Caribbean Sea, but as we get into the mid to late parts of next week, that's when things are going to get a lot murkier in the long range. One week from today, we're going to see a fanning out of the data. A turn to the north is possible at this point. A track straight to the west into Central America is also possible. And a track into the Gulf is also a thing that we've got to watch out for. It's just so far out in time that there's not going to be a reliable and confident answer to give beyond really the Eastern and Central Caribbean Sea over the next week. So we've got a lot of time to watch this low confidence beyond next Wednesday. Saharan dust is also out in the Atlantic and Caribbean that may mitigate some of the development and that's going to be something to keep an eye on. And for sure the track beyond the Eastern Caribbean Sea is not knowable right now. We're just not to that level with respect to how good we are with data beyond a week, 10 days time. Just a lot of uncertainty in the long range. Just knowing it's there, that's the thing to